Hello, Sunday again. Okay, welcome back to our channel. Okay, it should be my work with of upload of my biology looks. Okay, thank you for visiting our site. So looking at my looks again. Thank you. I hope it can help you. Okay, so today we go to A2. Okay, and we talk about the first concept is the origins of cells. Where does the cell come from? Another thing is uh, far, far away. Okay, so another thing is just theory, but you still have to remember what is the current theory about it. And all things is at this no high level. If you are SL, you can take a break for this week, okay? And now we are on uh, A2, okay? A2 is about unity and diversity in cells, okay? First topic is about uh, where does the cell come from, okay? And then first of all, we have to talk about what is the prebiotic formation of a carbon compounds, okay? And then uh, first, first well, thing uh, we have to think about, what is the condition on the early Earth? Okay? Why uh, carbon compounds are formed during the early days by spontaneous formation, nothing before, and then they come out, okay? And actually, the exact condition of the early atmosphere is unknown to us, okay? All the thing is a hypothesis, so we just uh, have a blind guess, okay? We think uh, in the old time, not many oxygen, okay? Not many oxygen, and not many ozone, too. So there's no ozone layer in the, our atmosphere, so the UV light uh, go through, uh, shine on the Earth, the direct is so higher UV light uh, on the Earth, okay? So higher UV light, you know, a lot of energy, right? And higher concentration of carbon dioxide, that time we think. Okay, so resulting in a higher temperature, remember carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gases. Uh, imagine a lot of greenhouse gases here, so very, very hot. All these uh, situation, high temperature and higher UV light as the energy source, okay. We thought that it is a great condition, okay. For the compound, uh, carbon compound to form a spontaneous layer by chemical reaction to uh, cell to other complicated uh, carbon compound, okay. But we don't do not know it now, okay. Why? Why? Because we don't have the fossil yet, okay. We'll talk about it later, okay. This is a prebiotic uh, earth is uh, still uh, unknown to us. And then uh, and after talking about uh, chemical compounds or carbon compounds, we talk about our self-sustaining life. What's important about self-sustaining life? First of all, we have to think about what's life. Remember, the fam famous uh, long-life uh, thing is what? Long-living thing is what? Why was life? Remember, we talked about it before, okay. So we have to distinguish between living and non-living thing, okay? For the living things, okay, they respirate, eat, grow, move, reproduce, and have senses, okay? Remember what you did every day, okay? So it is living cells, living things doing that too. And uh, unfortunately, a virus has no metabolism, okay? So it is not a living thing. Always bear in mind, virus is not a living thing, okay? And uh, we, we find, if we think that a cell, okay, are the smallest uh, units of self-sustaining life, okay? So if we look for life, we should look for the cell first, okay? Formation of life from the formation of cell. But it is a little bit confusing. It is the smallest unit, but later on we find some exception. A cell can be quite big, one cell. But it is in the next chapters, okay? And uh, we talk about the spontaneous origin of cells. So remember spontaneous origin of carbon compound, right? And then cell, but it is uh, unknown to us too, because cell are highly complex structures. Okay, even nowadays uh, with our technology, we can't uh, produce one. We can't produce one cell without the division of pre-existing cells. Okay? To us, okay, not yet, okay. So the procedure, so the thing, so the process is still unknown to us, and it is hard to explain because we don't know it. Okay? How cells are originated spontaneously. We know the step, we know the thing that needs to uh, go through. For example, uh, for the first cell to be evolved, the uh, following steps are essential there to come across it. For the, for example, catalysis and the cell replication of the molecules, right? So if you have a cell, the cell has to know how to uh, replicate by itself, okay? And then uh, this kind of molecule has to assemble, okay? Join together. And then this uh, kind of molecule has to be separated. From the surroundings, have different uh, chemical environments, so you have to have uh, complementarization. We we'll talk about it later. Very important. So as the first uh, proto cell did not fossilize, okay, because it's far, far away. We we'll talk about it. There is a big gap, about four million years big, big gap between what we have for the fossil and then what we thought to be the first uh, proto cell. So it's hard for us to uh, testify the hypothesis. We are looking for it. We are, we are working. We talked about it at the last section. We are working hard to find out, okay, 
uh, more early fossil, okay? Find out the clues, okay? And the pasta, pasta is a very important genius, okay? About uh, an experiment, no one did it for 2,200 years, okay? I was told to say that, okay, there should be some uh, spontaneous generation uh, of life, okay? Living creature can be created from non living creatures, okay? I was told to fossil 350 uh, years of BC, okay? And uh, after 2,200 years, no one prove it or no one disprove it, okay? No one, no one can't do anything for it, okay? But Pasteur is smart, okay? In 1859, uh, he did a smart experiment, well designed experiment with the limited uh, equipment to show this, uh, to disprove this concept. So living creature cannot be created from non-living creature. It must have some p-living creature for new living creature to be created. It's the conclusion. Let's see what did he do. In past experiment is like this. Okay, here's some broth. Okay, broth have a microbes there. If you just leave it there, the mold will, uh, will be grown. Okay, so he do one thing. We pour the broth inside a flask and the flask has a uh, swarm that. Actually, in the, uh, if you look at Google, Google does the first uh, experimental cell. This is very low. Only air can pass through, okay? Other molecules, the microbes, the, the living thing can't pass through. Very low. One. The, my joint is uh, exaggerated already, okay? And the flask of broth, the first one is spoiled. Kill all the organisms inside, okay? And then the flask is left uh, in the air. And after two weeks, okay, low moles uh, appears in the broth, okay? Air can pass through, but we, we thought that microbes, microorganisms can't pass through. So my, low microorganisms inside, so low mode, low other microorganisms can be grown there, okay? And then uh, we broke the swarm neck, okay? And after two weeks, the mold appeared. Okay? So what was concluded? After breaking, breaking the swarm neck, okay, the microbes go inside, and there is micro there, and the micro can grow, 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 becomes a little micro mode. Okay, so the discussion is at first, okay, the microbes are blocked by the swarm neck. So remember, swarm neck means sealed for micro case. Only air can pass through, okay? So microbes are in the broth, okay? And so low mode. Okay, okay after the swarm neck is broken, the micro fall uh, into, onto the, into the broth, and then, okay, mold come from. Okay, what's the conclusion, okay? Mold need pre-existing uh, microbes to form, okay? So we can say that cells need pre-existing cells to form, okay? So this proved the concept of uh, the theory of a spawning this generation. So I thought it was wrong. Yeah, old time, right? But after 2,020 years. <laughs> and the modern version of a pasta experiment are like this, okay? So when you really be careful, just a main point is here. Swarm neck being sealed. You don't need to literally really seal it, okay? You can let uh, air to go through, okay, but it's this swarm neck, you could you should assume microism sealed from microorganism. So for the first one and not spoil, not sealed by swarm neck. Oh but not spoil also micro there. So more compounds. Okay. This one boiled but not sealed by swarm neck. Swarm neck is a sealed of microbes, okay, still still sealed. Although you say that it is not sealed, but the swarm neck prevents the micro to fall in. So still low mode. No micro, okay. Okay, not boil, not sealed, of course, with mold, okay. Boil, but not sealed, of course, the micro can fall inside if it's mold, okay. So when you do the passive, uh, remember this concept, okay. Swarm neck is sealed. Mirror UV, you will. Mirror UV has a quick experiment, but it's about another thing, okay. About not spawning near the generation of life, okay. It's about uh, before thing, okay, about the complex molecule. They test that, okay, whether complex uh, molecules of life, okay, can be produced by simple uh, molecules or by simple uh, natural chemical reaction, synthesize some uh, complex molecules of life, but not not uh, cell, okay, just the molecules. They did it, okay. The uh, animal acid is produced from water, I mean, ammonia, ammonia hydrogen, methane, and uh, electric spark in 1952. Do you remember what's the day? Yeah, the discovery of DNA, right? Remember? Yeah, photo 51. <laughs> That's just a mere coincidence, okay? So the electric sparks, okay, represent the, the lightning of the Earth. So it showed that in the early time, okay, by the lightning on the Earth, okay, amino acid can be produced by the simple molecules, okay? So Mueller Uri's experiments provides evidence for the origin of the carbon compounds only, okay? Not life, yes, okay? not cell, yes, okay, on the early Earth. So, so it's okay, we solve one of them, okay? 
uh, come on, come on, can be spawning this the uh, produce the but how about the cell? Still have a lot of thing to go through. The first part is a small spawning this formation of the vertical, so we, we need to have something surrounding the cell, separate it from the surrounding. Right, vertical is a membrane bound compartment. Okay, formation of vertical is needed. Okay, to allow the internal chemistry inside the vertical and outside the vertical to be different. Just like in your room, okay, you have a door. Right? You close the door, you have a compartmentalization. So inside your room, yeah, it's completely different from the dining room outside, right? <laughs> simple, simple, simple uh, concept, okay? It's just an analog, okay? So it's essential okay, for the formation of a uh, vesicle, is the essential for the formation of the protocell. So we have to, we look for uh, formation of protocell, we have to look, think about what makes us the vesicle. We have a theory later in next chapters okay so spawning this formation of a vesicle is important they actually later on you learn that this membrane is a fatty acid okay bilayer bilayer fatty acid okay as you feel like as you feel like bilayer okay and also uh, we talk about our dna and how the genetic uh material has to uh Pass to the next generation. Okay, so uh, we thought that RNA is the first genetic material because RNA is uh, just one strand, right? And DNA is a double strand. So we think RNA is uh, more simple. And we think that DNA is an evolved from the RNA, okay? And also RNA has a different form, okay? And not very stable, lot, lot. But our DNA is a very stable double helical form, okay? So we think that, that RNA is the first genetic materials, okay? And also the single strand RNA is very unstable, so they, later on they evolved into DNA, okay? And uh, yes, uh, RNA structure can be uh, damaged by enzyme, can mutate easily, so a virus can mutate easily. They use the RNAs to store their genetic code, okay? And the dual role of RNA, RNA also is an early thing, it's not just uh, storing the genetic uh, information, okay? RNA has also has some uh, catalytic uh, activity. It is also an, an enzyme, okay? So we think that in the early day, maybe RNA has two roles, okay? Storing the genetic material, and then it becomes the end, and, and also as the enzyme. And later on, when it evolves, it becomes DNA, so it doesn't uh, like it to be an enzyme. Other, other parts of the body can do it, okay? So we just store the genetic material. For example, we still have some crews, for example, ribosome. Inside a ribosome, okay, can be used to catalyze the peptide bond formation during the protein synthesis. Okay, some uh, RNA still are uh, doing the enzymes work. Okay, this is one of the example. And uh, we also have a genetic, you uh, genetic code. Remember what is this ring? Uh, all the living finger on the earth can share the same uh, genetic code. Genetic code is the concept about how to form the amino acid from the nucleotides. So three nucleotides, we call it nucleotide chip bread, three nucleotides form a codon, and one codon decides which amino acid to add to the proton as a sequence, okay? And all the earth, okay, we share, all the cells share the same nucleotide share, share the same uh, universal code about which V combination of nucleotides will form uh, which amino acid, and we just have a 64 codons, okay? And 64 codons are the code every living cell. Million, million, million cell use the same code. It's a 64, and they have some rare exception. So you would call it universal genetic code, okay? Okay, and we show that, and we show that evidence that we all come from the common. We have a common origin of the organism on the earth, okay? Then who is it? Yes, remember shared genetic shared genes, okay? Not about the DNA are the same, not about RNA. Are the same. No, 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 no. It's from the RNA to the amino acid. The coding are the same. We call it shared genes, okay? 64 codons, okay? Come on. So it's evidence of the common ancestor of all the organisms on the earth. And we want to find out the last universal common ancestor. It means that we have a common ancestor. And then you evolve, you evolve, you evolve. And then uh, at the last universal common ancestor, we after that, we start to split, okay? Different uh, organism appears on the earth. We want to find out this last universal common ancestor. It's the most recent, the last one, okay, population, okay, from which all the life on the earth come from, okay. All the life on the earth are the descendants 
descendant of this uh, last universal commander, just like the last one, okay. And Luca, okay. Okay, and then, I, but Luca is not the first knight right, on, on Earth. They don't talk about they have a, maybe a three million gap, okay, years gap, okay, between uh, Luca and the first life on Earth, okay. And Luca may live with other organisms too, okay. But the other organisms all die out, okay. All extinct by competition, so Luca win, okay. Although there's no fossil evidence for Luca, we'll talk about it later, okay, how, how many years we're looking for, okay, what's the gap, okay. But uh, by the but the biochemical similarity of living organism, we can guess about what's the property of the Luca and uh, what should it behave, okay? What's the characteristic of the Luca should be, okay? We are looking for the fossil, okay? We are working hard. And the first living cell and the last universal common ancestor, okay? There is a gap 3.5 million years ago. So during this time, the first living cell evolved, 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 evolved. Still uh, the same thing, okay? Until last universal common ancestor for 3.5 million years, and then split, okay? And then nowadays, we just have a 0.5 million years uh, gap between it, okay? Our first seal is uh, 0.5 million years after it, okay? So we, we work hard, okay? Fill the gap of this uh, 0.5 million years, okay? We probably will find out our look, okay? Our common interest. We're working hard. And then where, where can we find this uh, Luca? Okay, we find, of course, we find, once we find some fossil, right? Eh? Old fossil, so we look for some, uh, but the fossil has to have a lot of uh, organism, okay, there. So we look at the seafloor, okay? So seafloor is old time, okay? A lot of layers, so we look at the ocean basin, uh, hotspot, uh, mid ocean regions, okay? Down there, very stable, low, one, low erosion, uh, low one, uh, low destruction, okay, then you can find the fossil there easily, but we have to find some place down there, have another organism, and we find that there's a place called hydrothermal vent, okay, in the deep ocean, hydrothermal vent, okay, it has, uh, it is a place uh, where there's a gap of the platonic, uh, tectonic uh, plates, okay, a lot of uh, volcanic eruption there, so a lot of energy, a lot of organism, and a lot of uh, variety there, abundance. So, so we can find a lot of different uh, fossil at that place. So we, but this is in deep ocean. So we go down to deep ocean to find out the, the fossil there. Okay, we are looking for the look. Uh, remember, we still have a 0 0.5 billion years gap to be filled. We work hard to look for the fossilized evidence. We hope one day we can find out the Lucas uh, fossil. And then we look for the other 3.5 year, million years ago for the first life, okay? So step by step, okay? So that's it for my sharing for 2.1, the origin of cell. In this part, remember, a lot of things is a theory, but the pasta experiment, Mueller UV experiments are important. And the concept about what's in the early life and what's important for Luca is very important to you. So bear in mind this concept, okay? See you next week for 2.2. Bye.